Welcome to Faith Baptist Church, where faith is our first name. Faith means we believe. We believe the Bible is the Word of God, and we believe that Jesus is the answer, and we sincerely believe that there's a place here for you. Faith. It's who we are, and it's who any one of us can be in Jesus. I want to thank Pastor Skelly for giving me the opportunity to share the, the, the beginnings and the early history of uh, Faith Baptist Church. And this is a ministry that's so dear to our hearts. And we, we love ministry. We've always enjoyed ministry, not just here, but in uh, days uh, before as well. But this has a special burden because this is really our life's work. And we thank the Lord for all of His blessings, for all the people that have come our way. You know, the hundreds, literally thousands of people that have gone through our church. You know, the nature of the Fredericksburg area is, is transient. People move in for government service or military or uh, the construction contracting work. And uh, they're here for a few years and, and, and then they're gone. And in the beginning, that, that really bothered me that it was so hard to lose people, and it, it always is. But uh, later I realized it's part of our ministry. We have the opportunity to have an influence on people's lives then hopefully send them off you know, to serve in another place you know, in, in, a, uh, uh, in better shape uh, spiritually than, than, than what, how, how they came. And so that's, that's been a blessing. We have uh, members of our family of faith all over the world, uh, all across our country, and we always enjoy you know, meeting up with them in, uh, in different situations. But uh, when we, uh, we had uh, talked about the early days of the church, and of course those years then in our, our first little building, and, uh, but it was soon, you know, it, it wasn't long before that, that building was full. The auditorium would, would seat comfortably, comfortably uh, full, uh, that is completely full. It would, uh, it would seat about 100 people. And of course, with the other rooms, we had to move to a children's church, and uh, we uh, had to, to use the other rooms as well as we as we got past that number. Uh, but it was soon very obvious that that we were going to to need new facilities if we were going to to be able to move forward and and to to do what we intended to do. And um, the 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 idea is, I didn't really have a, a great plan. We still only had. Uh, the, uh, the 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 about two and a quarter acres of property. It wasn't nearly enough for what we intended to do for the future, but it was a you know a toehold into the Route Three area, and we felt like that's exactly where God would have us at the time. It was very rural, very country, but uh, we felt like that was the right place. And and uh, so when we uh, were looking uh, looking at building, we we only had that small area to work with. Uh, one Tuesday evening, uh, uh, Grant Wilson and I were scheduled to visit, and uh, he came to the church to, to pick me up, and it was raining cats and dogs. It was just horrible weather. And I said, you know, really, this is not uh, a good night for us to, to, to go out, and, and, uh, and so let's, uh, let's, just, let's just talk for a few minutes. And so we sat down in my uh, little tiny study in those days, and... Um, we were just talking about you know how the God was blessing and the uh, the people that we were seeing come to the Lord and come to the church, and uh, we said you know we're going to need n new space and uh, we we got to talking about that, and uh, so we uh, I got out my uh, drawing board I have a raised line drawing kit where you can you know, draw uh, draw on a sheet of plastic and it makes a raised line. And we, we both started you know, uh, talking about different ideas, different ways of adding to our building, you know, getting a larger auditorium. And we had all kinds of designs that we spent the evening. We just both got excited about this. And uh, we, um, and we had several different things that, that could have worked, but uh, most of them involved tearing down the building we had so that we'd have a place to put the new building. And that really wasn't a, a great idea you know, in, a, in a practical sense. And uh, I said, I, I, you know, it's just hard to figure this out. And he said, well, he had been in a church that had used an, an architect and uh, the Jenkins uh, Architectural Associates and and they had designed several independent Baptist churches in the past. And, uh, and uh, so he suggested that I contact him. So I did. 
And, uh, and we got in contact with him and began to talk and he began to give us some different designs, different situations. And, and he did come up with something that w w worked uh, for the space that we had. And if anybody has ever wondered you know, why the old auditorium is just at a different angle from Route 3 and from the rest of the buildings, that's why. That in order to, to, to put it all on the property, keep uh, the building that we already had, keep it uh, in use, and then add the, the new space and give us room for a parking lot and playground and so forth, then that was the, that was the way it worked. And, and it, it worked for us very well. And uh, we, uh, so we broke ground on uh, that building in, in uh, uh, the Memorial Day weekend of uh, 1978. And uh, we um, uh, were slow getting started. We were using volunteer labor as much as we could, getting people to do little pieces in, at, at a time and uh, getting uh, uh, construction workers that, that where, we needed, where we needed real help, uh, kind of getting them in at different stages. But it was slow as, as a result. And, uh, and so we, we finally determined that we needed someone you know, to head up the project and uh, to get it moving uh, in, a, in a faster, more consistent way. And uh, Alan Forrester, my, my brother that uh, had uh, helped us with our first building, uh, I, uh, agreed to, to take on that task. And it was really a, a, a double job that he was going to need to um, uh, we had to contract out the masonry work because it was a block and brick building. And uh, with that, then we bricked the old building as well. And, uh, and so that we couldn't do ourselves. We couldn't pour the concrete and uh, on the two different levels. This would have a ground floor and, and then a first story. And, uh, and, and so he, he took that on and, and he was going to work the contractors during the day and then work our volunteer labor at night. And he put his mind to this. As a matter of fact, uh, by the, the fall and winter of, uh, of 1978, you know, this was underway. We had the, 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 the uh, uh, excavation done and we had the foundational work done and uh, it was beginning to come up out of the ground. In the winter, we had some snowstorms that set us back and, and so forth. But, but really, he just was so determined and he uh, uh, put the shoulder to the plow and, and he wasn't looking back until this job was done. Uh, so uh, uh, we occupied that space uh, uh, in 1979 on Memorial Day weekend. So one year later, we were in that new auditorium. And the auditorium was completely finished. Now, the, uh, the ground floor was not finished. Matter of fact, all of our building programs, including the very first one, uh, and uh, right up until uh, our last project, uh, we would build the, the big shell of the building, and then we would uh, finish the essential parts you know, that were necessary for uh, what we were our next step. And then we would uh, use volunteer labor and uh, contract out uh, the parts that we had to to finish the other building, but we could do that with, without having to borrow money. You know, it was a very inexpensive way, or at least less expensive way of, of doing that. And it, and it really brought into, to, um, into our church uh, ministry, you know, the the skills of, of a lot of people that that uh, that this was the thing that they could contribute, and they did, and they did so willingly. Now we had uh, uh, Alan, and then uh, two other laymen that really helped us immensely in giving leadership to this project. Uh, Elwood Tomlin, which I've already mentioned before in our in our talks, they had come to Christ, and uh, he was uh, electrical contractor. Did the, the they did the transmission lines, and he had access to all the heavy equipment. He he could get whatever we needed, and uh, it was just amazing. We'd have our uh, construction site, you know, all these big. Uh, 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 machines and uh, trucks, you know, that uh, that really would have cost a fortune for us to employ. He was there even with our volunteer labor. And then uh, 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 Glenn um, Newberry, who was um, involved with the construction work of the uh, nuclear pl power plant out at the Lake Anna, he was uh, uh, helping us as well, and so with their expertise, uh, then we could we could bring in the the work crews that we needed during the day, and then at night, you know, our guys would would go to work, you know, men and women, and and just uh, it, they they would put in a lot of work. And matter of fact, uh, the uh, a, a lot of that uh, was done late at night. And those men sometimes you know would would work till till midnight, one and two o'clock in the morning.
you know, according to what they had to do the next day or whatever. But it was it was it was a lot of work, and uh, a lot of. But they had a lot of fun. You know, there, there's just something about working together. Our, our, the fellowship of our labor, you know, is an important part of ministry, and. There, there were a lot of friendships that were built you know, through those times. Uh, we got acquainted with each other. We, we, we loved each other. Uh, a lot of funny stories came out of that as well. Let me just tell one. Uh, we, uh, it's called the Spotlight Club. And uh, as we began to, to finish that, uh, the auditorium space, and uh, they, uh, the baptistry had been installed, and uh, it, um, but uh, the the lights, the you know the spotlights and so forth for the baptistry were not uh, set, and and so they they uh, 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 Alan and Elwood, uh, they just had this bright idea because we had all the scaffolding there. They were putting lights in the auditorium, so they had scaffolding in there, and so when uh, when uh, people would come in, as a matter of fact, I was uh, the first member of the Spotlight Club. I, I was. I came over one day to see how things were going. They said, "Well, everything was fine, but they were getting ready for installing the the lights in the in in the baptistry, and they needed to train those in, get those set." And uh, would I mind standing in the baptistry uh, so that they could get all that taken care of? And I was more than happy to do that. And so I got in the baptistry, went down the steps, you know, standing in the middle, and uh, and all of a sudden, from both sides, I got hit with uh, with a five gallon bucket of water. And let me tell you, that can that can knock you down just about. And uh, I was just soaked. And of course, they 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 laughed laughed uh, uproariously. That was a really funny. And of course, I was not happy with that situation. Uh, that I I. Uh, uh, they said well, I was the first member of the Spotlight Club, and then from then on, you know, as people would come in, uh, they would uh, take people that they felt like could take a joke, and, and maybe even a few that couldn't take the joke. Uh, they would uh, coax them in, into the baptistry and uh, do the same thing, and the different reactions just were so funny, uh, and uh, great stories that we we love to tell about the different ones that. Uh, and the different reactions uh, uh, the, to, to the Spotlight Club. But those were good days. We, we enjoyed that. A lot of work, you know, but uh, w- they were investing uh, in, in the, the ministry of Faith Baptist Church. Uh, so we, we moved into the, to the auditorium that, uh, that May, and we, we, uh, we just about filled the, the, the new auditorium. It would seat comfortably, you know, 300. It could you'd go to four if you, you got everybody to sit right next to each other, which we never were able to do. Uh, but uh, uh, we were, uh, uh, you know, it, it uh, gave us uh, a, a lot, a lot more space. It was a, a great place, and lots of wonderful things happened. You know, in that in that auditorium, and we were in that auditorium uh, for the the next, I guess, thirty years. Uh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, about uh, yeah, thirty years. Um, so almost thirty years, like twenty eight years, something like that. Anyway. Uh, the the um, that uh, allowed us to to to, to grow and, and not to to have the problems we were having in the little tiny auditorium, and uh, then uh, that uh, that next year, uh, now we wanted to, to of course to, to start our school ministries. Now in 1979, that is when we first moved into the auditorium, that left the old auditorium free. And so we uh, took our first step, you know, toward our um, our school programs. We uh, established our daycare, went through all the 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 uh, necessary steps to get that in place. And uh, we had our preschool and our daycare. We uh, had an academic program for our two and three year old program, uh, two year three year olds, and for our four and five year old kindergarten students. And uh, we uh, we got started with that in 1979, but we wanted to, to move on with the rest, you know, the next stage of our school in 1980. But we had to finish the ground floor because that had been designed by our architect as school classrooms, and uh, we uh, but we we didn't have the money. We we were able to you know to uh, to do the little things along the way, but we didn't have the money. You know, to, 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 to get that job done. And we were running out of time. And I, I asked our men 
uh, to, to pray with me and, and to fast if, uh, if, if the Lord should lead. Uh, that that God would would provide the the necessary funds and and uh, I I had asked our, our our construction people you know what it would take us to to get that finished ready for classes and they said about twenty five thousand dollars now that sounds like such a small number today uh, but in in those days you know you could do a lot of work with that uh, with that amount of money and so we. Um, uh, we began to pray about that, just uh, the, the men and, and myself. You know, we never made this a, a big issue with, with the church. Uh, people had sacrificed, you know, already and get into the new building and so forth. And, and uh, so one day, you know, someone came to my office, one of our, our men uh, uh, came to me and said, you know, that they, they, had, uh, uh, they, had, they wanted to make an offering. But they, they didn't want to give it through the church. They didn't feel right about that. It was a, you know, it was a bigger check, and they didn't want to put it through the offering. And could they just uh, you know, write the check and then and leave it with me, and then I'd get it deposited, and it wouldn't have to go through the offering? I said, well, sure, we can take care of that. And uh, uh, then he said, well, I, you know, I, I want you to, to put it to where, whatever you think we, we need the most. And, and, and I said, well, I said, uh, uh, what what are we talking about here? And, and finally, he said, "Well, we're talking about you know twenty five thousand dollars." And I said, "You've got to be kidding!" I said, "Is this you know, this for the building for the for the the, the classroom project?" And he said, "What what project?" He knew nothing about that. He he was not familiar with the with that particular need. And, and uh, this was obviously the the working of the Lord and the timing and and his willingness, he and his wife's willingness to to give the, this particular gift, and. Uh, and and uh, so with that, you know, we we were able to to finish up our uh, classrooms and and start our, our school, our uh, elementary and and our uh, our uh, uh, middle school, you know, grades uh, one through eight in 1980. So 1979, we started our, da our daycare and preschool. In 1980, uh, we started our uh, elementary and uh, uh, middle school. Uh, and uh, and what a what a blessing that was because this was a fulfillment of a of a, of a great dream. You know, we we really wanted to to, to see that done. Uh, and uh, but but with the the moving into our new auditorium and and, and, and the new classroom space and so forth, that that uh, really and. Intensified our, our burden for evangelism, and and we uh, over those those next years uh, really set out. You know, God really burdened my heart. You know, to reach our area. I remember, you know, coming out of um, the the church and and standing on the sidewalk in front of the church one night. Our house was still next door to the church at that point, and. Uh, I uh, and, and here and by this time there was a lot of traffic and in the old days you know hardly a car would go by every once in a while but now there was lots of traffic on Route Three and I thought you know all these people that are coming into our community and we are not reaching them all and uh, so we began to talk you know and uh, with uh, our church leaders and 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 with our congregation about what can we do. You know, to to be more effective in, in reaching our, our community, and what came out of that was our, our first real concentrated evangelistic program, and that was uh, we called it Everybody Ought to Know, and we used as our, our chorus the 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 uh, chorus that everybody knows that everybody ought to know, and. Uh, we, what we did is we divided up into teams and we did it in five different groups and we asked people to, to, to join uh, at least one. And uh, one had was, uh, was the visitation, you know, a door to door or, or appointments, it didn't matter, but, but uh, th to be a part of our visitation program. And then, uh, then we also wanted to reach people through the mail. Uh, and uh, both through personal letter writing and through a, 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 a bulk mail program it, mailing to the entire area. As a matter of fact, we did that. We, we mailed uh, 30,000 households in the whole Fredericksburg area uh, uh, during that campaign. And then, of course, uh, we had our track team, everybody that was willing to take tracks and and uh, share them wherever they went and invite people to church and uh, witness if uh, they were in a place that they could do so. And then we uh, had our, what we call the, the bell brigade, the telephone, because we use the, the uh, crisscross directory and we got people that are willing to do that. It takes a special person to sign up for that. But we had some that did and some that were so effective. One of our uh, deacons, uh, our early deacons, Ted Grafton, uh, just had a beautiful voice, an old, ki kindly, uh, elderly man. And, and he would spend hours 
was on the phone, you know, every week, you know, calling people and, and he would call me up and say, Pastor, I think I have somebody that, that we ought to go see. And I said, all right. And so he'd go by and pick me up and we'd go out and visit and we would ha have the opportunity in, in many uh, cases to, to win someone to the Lord. Matter of fact, uh, uh, the, the other two uh, teams were the, the the other team was the follow up, uh, but uh, one time Ted called me and uh, he said I've got somebody I think that, that we really could win to the Lord and so we went out to to, to see this lady and uh, when when we when we showed up she said wait she said are you is this the church because uh, Ted had set up the appointment on the phone and she said is this the church that sent out this brochure. And, uh, and uh, Ted said, yes, that's, that's our brochure. And uh, she said, well, somebody came by the door the other day uh, with, this, with this little pamphlet, and the, the gospel tract. And he said, yes, yes, that's our church. And I thought that, that was just so amazing. And she did trust Christ as her Savior. That was a wonderful day. Uh, I remember going to, uh, at that time, we had the, the little high is on Route 3 as the high is a uh, convenience store. It's an ice cream store, but also a convenience store. And we were, Shirley and I were in there one day. Uh, I don't know what we were buying, hopefully some ice cream. But uh, I tried to give a track to the, to the cashier, and he said, no, I don't need that. And, and I thought, well, you know, we're just, just inviting you to church. And he, he said, no, no. And he said, I, I don't need that. And he popped his cash drawer open and had a whole stack of our gospel tracts uh, you know, that had been given to him. And I thought, this is wonderful. We can do this. We can you know, begin to, to make an impact uh, on, on our area, but we have to do it on purpose. It's not easy. We've got to do it on purpose. Uh, and uh, so now, obviously, we did not reach our entire area uh, in that campaign. So our next campaign was nothing is impossible. You know, we're, we're, we're going to try to reach it. And let, let me tell you, uh, we've never uh, achieved that goal because people still uh, keep moving in. People keep changing. Uh, the, 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 the need is, is, is growing and growing and, and just getting bigger. We've got a big job to do. So we... Uh, uh, through the the eighties and early nineties, we used a, a lot of these uh, a, a lot of campaign ideas. You know, just concentrate on on uh, reaching people. You know, with uh, with the gospel and and uh, inviting people to our church, and uh, that was a a big blessing. And it's during that during those years, you know, we had. Um, uh, families that, that joined with us, you know, uh, the, the Bergerins came, the, the Gardeners, you know, came as the, the result of the invitation of uh, Rod Sturgeon, who invited uh, 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 Janice to, uh, who they worked in the same place, to, to uh, the Memorial Day service uh, uh, in uh, 1980. And, uh, and as a result of, uh, of uh, his witness, she you know, trusted Christ as her Savior. And uh, then uh, she and Harris uh, married, and, and uh, they began to come. And, and then that Christmas time, you know, Harris uh, trusted Christ as his Savior during a communion service uh, in, uh, in, in 1980. And, and, uh, and then, of course, the, the, the Reeds, you know, Rod and Susan, you know, came uh, during that time. The, the Graftons, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Nicholsons, uh, Larry uh, was our, our first, one of our teachers and also our first youth director. Uh, you know, Mary Lewis and her, and her kids, you know, the, the, um, uh, the Tysons, the, the Taylors, uh, Loretta, which we just uh, uh, buried not long ago and loved so dearly. Uh, and... Uh, then uh, the um, uh, uh, the uh, Green Roses, uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 Perkins, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, of course uh, the, their children have been such a, a blessing to us. You know Daniel and and Rebecca, you know as they've uh, served in our church, and then uh, Robert and um, and uh, and Karen Pinkard, you know, came uh, during the later in this time period. The Haters, uh, the the Hales, the the Wilkins, you know, the um, uh, the um, uh, Hawleys came during this time period. The the Heist family, which later he started uh, one of our mission churches down in in uh, Thornburg, uh, then uh, which uh, now is Vision Baptist uh, Church uh, down in the the Ladysmith area. Uh, the the Hovies, you know the the Adkins, one of our deacons, the O'Tools, the uh, 
uh, uh, just on and on. The Dismukes, and a matter of fact, uh, Martha, you know, uh, Janice Gardner invited her to come, and 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 uh, her husband, uh, the the her husband, you know, Bob Scott. Uh, just had a great burden for him and, and won him to the Lord and uh, just changed their lives. And of course, when uh, when Mike passed away, then then Martha, you know, came in to, to help us on the telephone and did such a wonderful job that she earned herself, you know, a, a job for a lifetime as long as, as she was uh, able to work. And as a matter of fact, only recently as uh, she stepped away from from being our telephone receptionist, uh, just just perfect for that job. Uh, the 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 butchers the. Uh, different families of Browns uh, that that helped us in so many different ways, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 Burtons, the Crawfords. Of course, Shelley was uh, uh, one of our school teachers and and, and worked her way up to a, the administrator. Uh, at uh, at one time, she was our uh, acting administrator for for the year after uh, Wayne Scott uh, stepped aside and took a job with the college. Uh, the the Epsteins, you know, the the McClungs, the Wilkins. Uh, I'm sure many of you remember those names. And of course, uh, the Listers, Dennis and Susan, came you know in 1984. You know, during this time, uh, the McBrides and uh, the Murphys and. Uh, the uh, the the dailies, you know, just so many. And now, please uh, forgive me if I didn't mention here because there's no way to go through everybody. I'm just trying to to show you that these are names that are going to be familiar to to many of us. Uh, but there's no way that we're going to be able to mention everybody that uh, has been active in the church and has contributed significantly over the years. There's just too many. But um, so we, we started with the preschool you know, in, in 79, uh, our elementary and, uh, and uh, uh, second or, or uh, middle school in 1980. In 1981, we uh, started our high school. We started it as a unit because uh, if you're going to have a high school, then, then you, you, can't, you, you can't add it just a little bit at a time because, you know, you need a history teacher, an English teacher, a science teacher, a math teacher. And uh, that, uh, so we, uh, we got everything secured and, and started our high school in uh, 1981. And uh, that year graduated one. Uh, so, uh, uh, and so we, you know, the, the ministries were beginning to, to fill out and, and just, uh, uh, we, but we needed lots and lots and lots and lots of workers, lots of workers. And uh, you can do a lot, you know, through your Sunday school and your church services and so forth. But to, to really develop the skilled workers that are, are necessary to, to doing all the work of the ministry, we need some serious you know, training programs, both in the scriptures and in uh, ministry methodology and so on and so forth. And um, as a result, now two churches that uh, we had had a part in getting started, uh, the, the Colonial Baptist in Stafford with uh, Mickey Creed and uh, Ambassador Baptist uh, down in uh, Bowling Green, uh, that uh, they were experiencing uh, growth and, and they had men and uh, women that were interested in, in ministry. And uh, all of us were looking, how to, what do we do? If we send them off to college, then that, that doesn't help us accomplish the work that we have to do here. And plus, they're not going to go off to college. They're, they're in the church. They're, they're staying here. And so we, we uh, prayed about it and, and uh, decided that we would look into starting a, a Bible Institute. And, and we did, Berean Baptist Institute. Uh, which uh, was a graduate of theology uh, program. That means it's a, it's a traditional uh, pastor's uh, uh, Bible school education. It's uh, three years of, of uh, doctrines, Bible, and, uh, and, and methodology. Uh, so it's a 96-hour you know, uh, uh, Bible diploma. And then as uh, the, we, we went, it was a three-year cycle that, uh, that we worked through. And, and then uh, we d- went through this twice. And, and we, we had great results. We had people that became workers in our church. Uh, you know, p- people not necessarily, ta- we had some that took the whole program and graduated and graduated. Others, you know, would take what they needed. You know, they, they would take the Bible classes, doctrines classes, and so many of our people, you know, uh, developed uh, an, a, a good working knowledge of the scriptures and, and, and uh, basic Christian uh, teaching and uh, learned areas of ministry, you know, we, you know through, through, uh, through the, the Bible Institute. And uh, but in, and so in, as, as we saw this working, we thought, you know, this we, we could move to a college program and this would help us 
uh, because all three of the churches you know, had schools, and we thought this could help us in so many ways that if we were able not only to train people for the, the regular church ministries, but also for our school ministries. And so we moved to a, to a college degree program in 1990, became uh, Virginia Baptist College uh, to a four-year uh, degree, uh, offering uh, uh, d- degrees uh, you know, both in, in ministry and uh, in education. Uh, and uh, this, the, the Lord, you know, tremendously blessed, and uh, uh, we um, we th- then moved. Uh, we moved toward uh, getting our, our program fully accredited, and uh, we we uh, we uh, finally achieved that that goal, which is a very uh, difficult process, especially coming from Bible school uh, uh, roots. And uh, but this uh, this program then has recently in the last couple of years has uh, been a, a Veritas Baptist College, as our as our uh, ministry goals you know were broader, but all of them were to keep people from the very beginning. The point was to keep people within the ministry to train them, you know, to to do the work of the church, and that from those God would call some to to be pastors and missionaries and to to go out from us to to do other things. But all of these would achieve our goal, either in our Jerusalem or in our Judea or in our Samaria or in the uttermost parts of the earth. That didn't really matter. Our goals were fulfilled. Uh, if people stayed with us and served in our congregation or if they went out to do those other things that's no, so necessary for us to do as a church. So the, the, the college program you know, was born and uh, today is tremendously successful under the leadership of uh, John Edmonds and uh, with uh, Pastor Skelly serving as uh, uh, the chairman of the board and giving uh, leadership and, and uh, uh, promoting and, and uh, giving uh, direction to, to the college you know, through, its, uh, through its board. So, uh, uh, the, uh, it's, it, to me, it was just such a huge blessing. I've loved schools. I taught Christian school, as I've shared before, for five years before pastoring, and a great burden for Christian education. I think Christian teachers are the, the, the unsung heroes of the Christian faith. They're the pioneers. They are on the line. And uh, I just love them and appreciate the sacrifices that they make uh, in order that uh, that they might uh, give a, a godly Christian education, you know, to our to our families. Now, uh, but I just enjoyed so much, you know, having the activity, you know, of the the daycare and the school, and uh, so many stories I'd love to share. It just makes me smile to think of all the this precious times. As a matter of fact, you know, I it was always a it always depressed me, you know, when the the school was out, you know, when the because you know, there's just nothing that's more lonely and and uh, than an empty church building, and we just wanted to, to see the Lord use our facilities to to the maximum, and. Uh, that uh, and that we did. You know, daycare ended about the time that that the that the college started. This college was a was an evening program. You know, for that for its first years, and uh, and uh, so you know the daycare ran till about six, and then the college classes you know began at six and and went till ten, and so I. Uh, uh, you know, I many times, you know, stayed over, you know, b- between the two. And I, I remember, you know, the daycare had, had closed and uh, Mary Scott one day was, uh, she was uh, cleaning the, the building was, uh, at least my portion of the building was empty at that, at that time. And she, uh, uh, she knocked on my, my door and, and I said, listen, this, uh, I have a gentleman here that, that uh, wants to talk with you. And, and then, then she left. And so the, the, the the man came in you know he's moving around the room and and uh, uh, he um, I, so I said uh, what can I do for you and and he didn't say a word you know he just there was nothing and and he was obviously there he was moving I could hear him moving and so I, I introduced myself and said you know I'd be glad to help any way I could and ta 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 and uh, but I got nothing. And we had this frustrating situation for several minutes until I realized that he was deaf uh, and I was blind. He didn't know, I didn't know he was deaf. He didn't know I was blind. And, and so he had this awkward, uh, he, I'm sure it was gesture. I, told, I said he was moving around. So, you know, he's, he's moving and uh, is, is active. 
Uh, and so finally I went and got Mary and, and, and brought her in. And, and so uh, sure enough, that was the situation. He was a deaf evangelist that was traveling and uh, he had a particular need at that point that we could help with. And so I, uh, we did, but uh, what we had to do was uh, that he would um, uh, write on a, on, a, on a pad and then uh, Mary would read that to me and then uh, I would uh, dictate to Mary and she'd write it down and, and he would read it. It was a long conversation to just get a couple of things taken care of, but it was just one of those experiences. So uh, uh, it, 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 we, we, the building was just never empty. We always had something that was going on and we, we thank the Lord for those opportunities. Uh, but uh, I, um, I thoroughly uh, in, enjoyed uh, the work of uh, Faith Baptist Schools, and, and I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, my role in, uh, in uh, Veritas Baptist College, and do so to this very day. Uh, that's my primary ministry, is serving as a, as a, a faculty member for, for the college, and I, I love uh, what's been done and, and just uh, the creative ways that uh, Pastor Skelly and, and uh, uh, Brother Edmonds have have uh, shaped our program, and we've had a wonderful year and uh, looking forward to great things for the future. But uh, we wanted a church you know, that, that grew, a church that was serious about the Lord's business. Uh, we wanted a church that was that was witnessing, you know, that that was growing, that was that was thriving, that would, people were maturing. Uh, we um, uh, that uh, you know the, the church where everybody's involved and everybody has has a place to serve. Now uh, and uh, through the the various ministries and 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 we we don't even have have time in this situation to talk about all the different things that that we do within the church and even within the church today. So many opportunities for people to serve. Uh, now, uh, but, but during this time, we wanted to continue not only with our Jerusalem, but with our uh, Judea and Samaria and, and, and the uttermost parts of the earth. And so we wanted to, to plant more churches and during this, uh, the, the, the early 80s, early middle 80s, then many of the churches uh, in our area, you know, the Fredericksburg surrounding area up and down the uh, 95 and 64, you know, we, many of these churches we were able to start. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Faith has uh, uh, been the mother of, of nine uh, churches directly, and and then scores of uh, other churches in uh, uh, in uh, Virginia, the East Coast, and across America that we have had a direct involvement. And of course, uh, we're all familiar with the uh, the 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 uh, well over a hundred missionaries that we support support in different parts of the world, and it's a hands on ministry. You know that that uh, we uh, when, when uh, every every area we do what it's within our power to do now it's different from our Jerusalem where we are going to do all the work uh, it's it's very hands on and and then to our uh, Judea, where we're going to have a, a, a really purposeful involvement. Uh, and then, you know, moving further away, and uh, then it gets uh, more through our financial contributions and our occasional work teams or so forth that might go to the different points in the mission field. Matter of fact, we had started a, a brick ministry that's uh, building riches in Christ's kingdom, but it was a, a construction group uh, that uh, Jeff Murphy and uh, uh, Scott Moyer, you know, worked, worked with that and, and going to our various mission fields. And, and actually doing you know a physical work and and then doing ministry work our ladies would go and, and help as well uh, but uh, through all of this as the church grew you know, again we needed we needed um, you know larger and, and and better facilities you know that to meet specific needs and uh, you know in, in 1983 and uh, 1984 you know we did a little addition to the, the back of uh, that first little building, which is, is again now part of our preschool, that, uh, that extension area. As a matter of fact, every, if you walk down the hallway through uh, the preschool area, everything to the right was that, uh, uh, to the right of that hallway. That, that hallway goes right down through a row of classrooms that was in the first building. Everything to the left was the, the church auditorium and, and the nursery. Uh, everything to the right were those additional classrooms that we added uh, for for the sake of uh, our Sunday school and our school, uh, our uh, we moved our as uh, the school grew, then then uh, we moved our uh, 
uh, first, second, uh, third, fourth grades up into that area. Uh, and then, of course, like we've had to shift them around. And matter of fact, uh, uh, let me just say, churches are not a building. You know, that build, facilities are just a tool. Uh, they allow us to, to, to do the, the work that, that we need to do. Uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, our building, you know, has changed and morphed uh, in so many ways over the years. You know, we, we change, we remodel. Uh, uh, we redefine, we tear down when that's necessary. We had to have had to do that with a couple of houses along the way uh, to, to clear space for other other needs. Uh, uh, we uh, build new facilities. All of that we do. All of those uh, uh, are uh, we want to use them to the highest use. In other words, that uh, uh, sometimes people say, "Well, are, are you sad when certain portions of the building are?" Are repurposed, and uh, and and I would say, hey, listen, I'm always nostalgic, you know, about things that happen in certain areas. As a matter of fact, I I wander our buildings today, and and I think of all kinds of things that happened in different areas, but uh, they all are going to be remodeled, repurposed, uh, you know, along the way. Our first uh, our first little building, which is now the preschool and then the nursery and. Uh, so forth, and they, they, that is such a large ministry. It takes up all of that space. What what once was uh, up through the fourth grade is now strictly you know, nursery and preschool. But I can remember that when there was the auditorium. I can remember when, when it was this, when it was that. It's changed so many different times where this space was somebody's office. This space was the church nursery. Uh, all the things that happened there, the, the weddings, the funerals, you know, the, this and that. Uh, uh, no baptisms there because we didn't have a baptistry. But uh, it, 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 people say, well, do you remember when it was this? And I said, yes. And I remember when it was this and this and this and this. So am I sad? No, I'm nostalgic. Nostalgic. I, I'm very much a, a sentimental person, and I appreciate you know those things that have happened. But I am thrilled you know to to see the the ministries grow and expand and and uh, to to put all of it to the very best use. Uh, now that doesn't mean that that we're not that we're, there's not some some uh, some uh, emotion to to moving from one space to another. Every time we moved from one auditorium to the next, then it was difficult for us. And we would have a time of, of remembrance, you know, just the service where we'd have testimonies what happened there. But but always looking forward to the opportunity of getting to that new space and warming that new space up and putting it to to use and uh, to to the best way. Now. Because of uh, you know the, the the needs as our school grew and we needed a gymnasium, we needed additional classrooms, uh, we needed office space. There's just so many things that we could use across the board for the whole ministry that uh, we we started our Faith for the Future campaign, which was in those days you know an annual. Uh, focus on you know, getting ready for, for the next facilities. And uh, 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 we wanted to expand and enlarge and, until, we, until we had that, that, that what we considered the maximum uh, or the, the, the uh, optimum is, I guess, the better word, uh, facility for, for the ministries that, w- that we had in mind. And so uh, we uh, started our Faith for the Future in 1991 as we approached the the building of the Scott Center. The Scott Center just about tripled, well, it did triple our space. Uh, and it was uh, twice as big as our combined space before. And it gave us, you know, the gymnasium, uh, multiple classrooms upstairs, offices downstairs, our locker rooms, our, our kitchen facilities, hospitality rooms, storage rooms, uh, our stage, you know, all the things that, that we needed, you know, for that, the, the next step. Uh, and uh, we, we, again, we, we built the, the, um, the, the big building, the, the shell, and we moved into the classrooms, the upstairs classrooms that connected you know, with the, uh, the old auditorium level. And that was our biggest need, you know, was the, the classroom space. And then we, then we uh, uh, finished out the, 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 uh, the offices and then the gymnasium and locker room, the, the kitchens for it. We just did all of this you know, with volunteer work and with money as, as the, the Lord provided. And uh, it gave us a, a you know, very nice facility. But again, uh, with uh, 
you know, the additional ministries, additional growth, and then those those areas filled up, and we we had to uh, to, to to look to, to new programs. But but each facility, you know, allowed us new ministries. You know, with the with the Scott Center, you know, we were able to to do our adult rec and youth rec. We were able to. Uh, 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 you know, cook and and prepare, and uh, uh, that there are just so many things that 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 added, and of course their office facilities were, were were a huge enhancement, all of which have have been uh, have been remodeled in, in in the subsequent years. I mean, we're talking about now thirty something years ago, uh, for the start of that project, and so all of that has been redesigned, reprocessed, uh, and, and that to me is just one of the thrilling things about ministry, and. Uh, uh, but during that time, we expanded our missions program as well. You know, many, many new missionaries. And we started our Romanian, uh, we were burdened for Eastern Europe. And uh, we uh, started our uh, uh, Romanian uh, Bible Institutes and eventually combined into a college ministry in Bayus, uh, where we have a thriving uh, group of pastors and uh, teachers who are continuing to, to train others and uh, have a great uh, relationship. And matter of fact, I was just there two or three years ago uh, for... Um, uh, for uh, the, the to to meet with those pastors and uh, they they have a f- camp ministry and and just a, a tremendous you know fellowship uh, in that that area of Romania e- Romania even extending across the country and of course in our own church you know we 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 wanted to deal with the needs of the community and one of our men uh, Brandon Neely one of our school teachers you know wanted to, to know about starting a Spanish ministry and uh, and and we did. And of course, Brother Omar has been the pastor for that uh, ministry for for uh, that portion of the ministry for many years. Uh, the the Korean uh, ministry, you know, I, I came to us and has uh, been a part of our church now for the last years. We we want to reach our whole community, everybody in our community. Uh, we've uh, you know, we but um, as we looked at our situation. And uh, we, uh, we realized that if we were going to continue at the Route 3 location, then it was going to be necessary you know, for us to, to expand our properties. And in, in the early 80s, we were able to, when, when we first came, when we first moved into that house, uh, then I went to all the neighbors along the, the ones facing Route 3 and then the ones facing uh, Heatherstone, you know, there in the, the, as it neared Route 3. And we asked them to, cons- if they would uh, consider, you know, uh, selling to us if they ever chose to, 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 to sell. That would they give us, you know, the first opportunity, and and everybody agreed to do that. Now they weren't interested at the time, and and and, and that's a good thing because we had zero dollars to put into that. Uh, but we did want to lay the the foundation, you know, for expanding our our location because obviously we were going to need more space uh, with our. Uh, with the the auditorium and classroom building that we built in in uh, seventy nine, uh, that uh, with the uh, together with the the parking lot was was really all that we were going to be able to do, you know, at that location. But you know, early in the the eighties, we were able to to pick up the uh, property behind us, which uh, was about two acres. It went all the way out to Route three. Uh, gave us access to the Route Three that kind of outlined our properties. Uh, we picked up then the this, the the next neighbor to that uh, it, uh, 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 on uh, Route Three. I'm, I'm sorry on uh, on Heatherstone. The only the, matter of fact, we eventually we're able to 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 assimilate all the properties that we had in mind, with the exception of the corner lot, which was Powell's Furniture. Uh, bought and we learned about that sale in the newspaper. The the people didn't call us, but everybody else, you know, they either called us or as we had conversation, you, we had uh, 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 were able to to purchase all of that that uh, corner, the facing Route Three and and, and Heatherstone, and gave us you know about uh, about twelve thirteen acres of, of prime you know, real estate on Route Three, which is just an excellent uh, place. We've uh, we have houses still on some of those, which would benefit our ministry and so many different ways but uh, we've used our houses for for staff we also use them for uh, offices and uh, matter of fact uh, Leland Hall the the property right uh, next to the church is not there anymore we had to tear it down to 
to uh, to to build the the new the newest auditorium and and expand the parking lot in that direction. But that was uh, the the VBC offices, you know, for for years. And and then the the next one over, we we had to tear down a, a, as well. And and then the the last one over there is is uh, is still being used as a house and uh, has been a great blessing to our, to our ministry. The others, I think, we still have six houses. Uh, but if we if we removed all the houses, we have as much space, you know, for uh, expanding the ministry in the future as what we've already developed. So God's blessed us so so richly, and uh, we're thankful, you know, for just all all that He's done. And uh, He's not only in, increased our our uh, uh, ministry abilities, but He's increased our faith, you know, exponentially in in, in all of this. Uh, but we had to come to, to to a decision, you know, in in uh, shortly after 2000 when we realized, okay, if we're if we're going to stay at this location, we have to choose to seriously pursue, you know, the 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 rest of the properties here, or we need to possibly look for another location. Uh, we agreed unanimously after giving this a lot of thought and study that our current location was uh, was the place that we should be and that we should make the effort uh, to to uh, to expand there. And so we uh, we spent uh, three years in uh, rezoning and acquiring. Uh, the the additional properties, and uh, then in not in uh, 2004 we were able to 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 start with the construction, uh, demolishing the houses. Uh, we picked up the Buttram building. Uh, that that is the old Buttram photography building. Some of the old timers might remember that, but it's now it became our our college building, uh, VBC, and then is now our our high school. And that uh, uh, brother uh, Jeff Murphy and his crew went in and totally gutted that building, built two stories, you know, inside. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Buttram came by one time to see us later and said, "Hey, he realized that there, there was so much potential in that building, he would have never left." But uh, that uh, that building uh, was added, you know, in uh, in in this uh, 2004 t- time period, and then uh, beginning work with the, the 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 big step, the big venture, because again, we were going to triple. You know our space, and uh, with the 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 um, uh, the Courtney Building, which is now the the high school, uh, and uh, with the uh, the the new Fellowship Hall, with the the new Commons and the uh, the new auditorium, and uh, the 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 balcony and uh, the classrooms and music facilities downstairs, uh, all of that together, you know, hugely uh, in, enlarged our facilities and gave us so many more opportunities, and. Uh, we're just so thankful, you know, for God's hand in all of this. It's just been so exciting to be a part of something that that God is doing. We're clearly uh, God is doing. It's beyond our own abilities and and uh, b- beyond as as uh, Paul's prayer in Ephesians three is uh, that that he's he's able to work, work exceedingly mighty things above what we ask or think. So. Uh, uh, our I, my last project as as pastor was uh, getting that done and getting that finished, and then uh, I uh, uh, my goal was to to move uh, to VBC at a, at a certain point uh, and to, to help you know, VBC to reach its full potential and uh, through uh, its accreditation and and setting getting everything set you know for for the years ahead I you know I realized it were I didn't have the gifts to do all that needed to be done but I could do that the you know the you know the foundational work to, to get things going in the right direction and so I uh, stepped down as senior pastor in 2011 and uh, brother uh, Watson Morgan uh, took the ministry and and, and uh, just uh, was a great preacher and a great pastor and we thank the Lord for for what the, uh, was accomplished in those years and uh, when uh, he left uh, to, to 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 do other things in uh, in 2016 then uh, we uh, uh, were able to, to through the the pulpit committee uh, to, to to call uh, to bring to our church 
uh, brother uh, brother uh, Kurt Skelly, uh, who just absolutely was the right guy at the right time and uh, took the ministry. And over these last years, it has been such a privilege to work with him. His vision is a tremendously gifted individual. And we thank the Lord you know, for bringing him to us. And it's been my privilege you know, to, to serve under him. But let me just say that the, the, the history of our church, you know, the history of any church is, you know, can be done. You, you, we can do it in two points. And one, it's, it's beginning and, and it's, and it's the end. And, and matter of fact, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes seven verse eight says, uh, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Uh, patient, uh, uh, in, in the, the patient in spirit is better uh, than, than the proud in spirit. So we, we can't boast at the, at the beginning. And uh, we, we need to be patient and not, not proud you know, that, or arrogant. You know, this, is, this is God's work. It's God's doing. Uh, and uh, you know, I had my, uh, my time as, uh, as, as senior pastor. And let me tell you, I enjoyed every moment. You know, I loved the ministry of Faith Baptist Church. It is a great work of faith. Uh, and, it, and it's my privilege you know, now to, to serve under, under Pastor Skelly, uh, which I consider America's finest pastor, and uh, and uh, it's been a uh, it's been an honor, you know, to put my life work and my life's work now, you know, in his hands. And uh, he's uh, he's uh, got an, he's absolutely committed uh, to uh, the the foundational principles of of uh, of our church, and has uh, just done a wonderful job in these last few years. We've enjoyed it Im- immensely. But my prayer. Is that that God uh, will uh, will use our church you know, to to do great things in the future, and truly, you know, better is the end of a thing than, than the beginning thereof. But FBC uh, has 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 no end in sight, and uh, we only have a beginning. So everything I've shared uh, in these in these sessions is just our beginning. That's the Lord's just getting started as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we've simply had the opportunity to lay the foundation uh, for uh, uh, even you know, greater opportunities that, that come in the future. And so my prayer is that our, our, our best days are, are, are yet ahead. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we want a church that is committed to winning people to Christ, seeing them baptized, you know, seeing them taught all that's, uh, that Christ has commanded, bringing them to spiritual maturity, and doing that in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. That's what we're concerned about. So a, a church is, is a congregation. Uh, it's made up of, uh, of its members and, and its leadership. And, and, and God has, um, has wonderfully you know, blessed us with both. We have a tremendous congregation filled with all kinds of gifts and that, that, that lead to all kinds of opportunities uh, for our church. And he's given us a, you know, a godly leadership and godly pastors and uh, support staff that, that, are, uh, that work together as, as a team you know, to open up the, the opportunities for the future. So I, I, for one, you know, I, I'm looking forward, you know, to the marvelous things that that God is going to do uh, through Faith Baptist Church in the future, and uh, what the future holds, we don't know. But uh, this is our commitment. We're going to serve Him, you know, till He comes. 